This is the Tuesday, July 21st, 2020 edition of the Dark Illumination Report Podcast Extra. And on today's show, I'm going to be answering a question from Jessica M., who asked, what do I think about the Diabolicon, and was Dr. Michael Aquino, the founder of the Temple of Set, an atheist? I'll be answering that question and more coming up on today's episode of the podcast. This is a Dark Illumination Report Extra with RJ Womack. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me for another episode of the podcast. This is RJ Womack, a.k.a. Brother Nero, and this is the Dark Illumination Report podcast where we promote the religious worship of Satan and demons as a serious faith and way of life and try to pass it down to future generations of diabolists. On today's episode, I'm going to be answering two questions that come from Jessica M., which is, was Michael Aquino an atheist, and what were my thoughts on the Diabolicon? First, let's get into the discussion of Michael Aquino. Was he an atheist? My honest answer is no, I don't think he was. And in fact, even though he presented his ideas about Set as him being an impersonal deity in public and a force of nature, I think when you look at his personal writings, when you look at the Church of Satan, History File of the Church of Satan by Michael Aquino and other writings that he did, it's clear that he had a personal belief in Set. What the nature of that belief was, I'm not sure, but he made it very clear that he believed in the Prince of Darkness and he swore his loyalty to him and he gave his soul to him. As you can see in a quote he gave in the Church of Satan, history follow the Church of Satan. I'll be posting a meme with this episode that shows the exact quote so you can see exactly what he had to say about it. But the idea that he was an atheist is probably a misrepresentation. I think personally he felt that his relationship with Satan was pri- uh, private or set was private. Satan, as he referred to him too, it's set Satan. It's the same entity, but it was private to him. And I think he wanted to keep it that way. And my personal opinion, at least as far as I know, is that he kept his pact with Satan set till the day he died. And he was adamant about the fact that he, he believed in his philosophy. He believed in what he was doing. And contrary to popular belief, he absolutely admired Dr. LeVay or or Anton LeVay, he referred to him as his devil father, um, you know, and he really respected what the Church of Satan did. In his opinion, the Church of Satan was doing things to change the world, and the Satanic Bible changed the world, and it only became corrupt after LeVay got away from his connection with Satan. According to Aquino, LeVay made a pact with Satan, and he saw it firsthand. Now, the Church of Satan denies this, but the people around LeVay at the time, including his PR professional, uh, Mr. Webb, I forget what his first name, I think his name is Ed Weber, and he said that LeVay believed in Satan, and that's why the Church of Satan worked as an idea, as a concept. If he hadn't believed in the devil as a literal entity, it would have never worked. And To be honest, I think LeVay did believe in Satan at some point in his life, in his early years. And I think he, like all of us, got tired of dealing with the crazy-ass people that this religion attracts. So he decided to start using the Church of Satan as a way to make money and leave the religious aspects of it behind. And that's when Aquino left to start the Temple of Set. Now again, the Temple of Set will deny this and say that it's not true, but I always tell you, If the Church of Satan, if their spokesman, if their mouth is moving, they're lying. Because the Church of Satan is not honest. They're not sincere. They are very um, dishonest people, and they will twist anything and everything to their advantage if they can. They don't care about the truth at all. And they will misrepresent the facts, and they will cast aspersions on anybody they can, And they will basically misrepresent any organization, any individual, if it serves their purpose. And they will rewrite history and they will totally ignore history if it suits them. One of the best examples of this is the fact that they say that LeVay created Satanism, which is clearly not true, but they say it anyway, even though they've been presented with facts about LeVay did not create the term Satanism, LeVay did not create the, uh, you know, the religion of Satanism, you present them with facts and they'll say, you didn't present the facts. 
and they'll ignore what you presented them. So they have no interest in the truth. They have interest in lining their pockets with money, not the truth. So when you read anything by the Church of Satan, especially this current leadership, you can't believe anything they say. You ought to automatically assume it's a lie unless you can prove that it's not. Anyway, getting to the Diabolicon now. The Diabolicon, every person that I know considers it an inspired text. Every person that I personally know that reads it feels Satan's presence on it, in it, and on it, and within it. And as far as I know, at least in the early years, Aquino never claimed that it was an inspired text. He never claimed that it was anything more than a story. But I think in later years, he started to kind of say that he felt that way, but I'm not sure. I can't give you an exact quote. You'll have to look it up and see what he had to say in later life. But I think in the early years, he didn't see it that way. But anyone that reads it that has a belief in Satan feels a presence with that book. So I do believe it's inspired. And let me stop right here and give you a little bit of um, terminology. Within this ministry, when we get it up and running, when we get everything going, we're going to be categorizing our text. We're going to be categorizing them in one of three ways. We're going to categorize them as general education, um, inspired text, and sacred text. Now, general education is any occult book that we find useful or any book that we find useful to help educate our members. And um, inspired text are those stories or, or those religious texts that are inspired by Satan, we feel that have been inspired by the demonic, but not necessarily are the result of a direct channeling. The example of an inspired text would be the Diabolicon, and an example of a sacred text would be like the al -Jua. According to all accounts, the al was a channeled text through Sheikh Adib. Now, that's the difference. Any text that we believe is a direct communication or the result of a direct communication would be considered a sacred text and would be part of the official canon. Anything that was inspired by the demons or the demons might have planted the seed of the idea but didn't directly communicate would, have, would be an inspired text. So I just want to make that clear and anything else would be a general educational text and we're going to categorize them that way within the ministry so that when people uh, start to work with us, they'll understand how we look at these different texts and that'll help them in their research and understand how we're going to categorize the different books and stuff. Um, we hope to eventually have some kind of form of online library and stuff like that, but we don't know if that's going to be possible because I have all these ideas, but having the money and the, and the manpower to do many of the ideas I have for the ministry, having the ideas and then having the people to do it and the finances to do it are a whole other issue altogether. So we'll be lucky if even half of the ideas that I have come to fruition, but there's always hoping and I hope that Satan will send us the people and the resources to do this if it's his will. And if it's not his will, I guess he won't. Anyway, that's it for this episode. I hope that helps. I hope it gives you some insight into at least my view of this particular subject. Um, if you have any other questions, Jessica, please feel free to ask them and I'll try to answer them. Uh, anybody else, if you have any questions, you can always reach me at brothernero1593 at gmail.com. That's it, guys. Remember, if you like the podcast, tell somebody. Review it. Let somebody know. Help us spread the word. Help us grow this ministry and grow this tradition so that we can actually create a tradition where people actually worship Satan again. Thank you for listening to the Dark Illumination Report podcast. For the latest news headlines, show information, and more, go to rjwomack.com. That's rjwomack.com.